All right, everyone, welcome back to the Be Healthy and Thrive podcast. My name is Brianna Wilkerson. I'm the host of this podcast and the founder of Made Well, which is all about empowering others to be healthy and thrive in all areas of their life. I am also an essential oils advocate, so I do both of those different things. But today we're here to continue with this series on loving God completely and talking about spiritual health. Even though this whole series has been around spiritual health, uh, I think it's great to specifically talk about it. And so today I have Stephanie Miles with me. Um, she's the founder of the Favored Love Ministries, and she'll tell you a little bit more about that. But thank you so much for joining, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and you guys, she looks great, and she's like eight months pregnant. So I just got to say, <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is doing you well. Anyways, um, <laughs> and so Steph, can you maybe just a little bit tell us a little bit about um, you and, you know, how you started Favored Love, and then we'll kind of get into the topic we have for today. Okay, um, I've, I started Favorite Love Ministries in February of this uh, 2017, mm -hmm. and it was really born out of a, a passion to tell people about Christ and specifically who they are in Christ. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people, you know, um, Christianity could po possibly be like a trend, you know, if I just accept the Lord, then everything will be okay and uh, great and whatever, but I really wanted people to understand who God was and who they are in Christ, like that total mind shift. Mm -hmm. And Favorite Love Ministries is telling people that you're both favored by God. You know, he doesn't uh, criticize you for your bad decisions. He, he loves you unconditionally. It says that in the Bible. So Favorite Love is born out of that passion to tell people, hey, God loves you mm -hmm. and he's here for you no matter what. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's scared towards. So mm -hmm. I have a blog um, and I have a Facebook page called favorite love and then i also have a women's group called defined by love mm -hmm. uh, which is specifically for women which is a, a facebook group and i have different other methods but <laughs> yeah basically the blog and the facebook group yeah it's so cool to see over like you know since february like be journeying with you from the beginning to see like where it's coming you know just kind of as you grow in the lord you're like i just want to do more and more and help others more and more so um it's so beautiful yeah. so uh you know, to topic today, you really wanted to talk about persevering and faithfulness. And I know that's kind of been born out of, you know, a journey, you know, even being in your group and seeing the, the posts you've been doing on the fruit of the spirit and you were reading a book, you know, Women's Walk with God. Can you maybe just mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your journey in persevering and faithfulness and kind of why you're so passionate about that? Well, uh, like you said, it, it all started with the study of the book, uh, A Woman's Walk with God, which is by Elizabeth George. And for some reason, I guess it's because I've been pregnant and just learning how to be more faithful and taking care of myself and taking care of the baby. I thought, okay, let's do a, a study on the fruit of the spirit. And as I began to read the, the book, I started to understand how we're supposed to be more faithful to God and learn about the different fruits of the spirit. It talks about... Um, love, joy, and peace, which bas basically is our relationship with God. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, our relationship with God, and um, patience, kindness, and gentleness, which is our relationship with other people. Mm -hmm. And then the, the final ones, which is gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, is what really, I would say is what really sparked my interest in, in developing this this. this journey with 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 god <laughs> and um being in, uh, inevitably it just led me to be like okay the faithfulness is just um it's okay <laughs> um wow so you're saying like the uh ah, you lost your train of thought so they saying yeah. that like the first set, you know, it was the third set around gent gentleness and self-control, right? That really, you know, sparked your interest. Kind of like, why did that spark your interest so much? Because it really made me think about what's, what faithfulness meant in everyday aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. um, the truth is we're always faithful to something. We're always, whether it's good, good things or bad things, we're always faithful to something. It's faithfulness in our choices, faithfulness in our good decisions, our bad decisions. And I had to really look at my, my life and be like, okay, what am I being faithful to 
in my everyday life? Is it benefiting me? Is it benefiting my family? Is it benefiting my church, my faith, everything like that? And it, it allowed me to have a really deep self perspective of what's going on in my life. Am I really pleasing God with my choices? Because that's really what we're asking when we're saying, well, am I faithful in this, in this, aspect of my life whatever that might be that might be health that might be spiritual health that might be in my work you know even right down to um you know just just faithfulness to burger king <laughs> yeah. you know some people be like you know i'm gonna go burger king because i really need that burger or whatever but is it really benefiting us you know is it our body is a temple of the lord mm -hmm. that's what it that's what the bible says right mm -hmm. so am i taking care of my body. So I really started to look at all these, these different aspects and really be like, okay, am I faithful to God in the way that I live? Mm -hmm. And that's how the book really shined on me. Um, mm -hmm. And just led me to ask those different questions. Mm -hmm. And um, The truth was that I was faithful in some aspect, but I needed to go deeper with God. Mm -hmm. Um, the Bible says that the just will live by faith, right? If you don't have faith, well, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So you, I, I'm a Christian, but I don't do anything that, that tells people that I'm a Christian or makes me believe that I'm a Christian or, you know, it doesn't change mm -hmm. my life. Then you're not a Christian. <laughs> mm -hmm. So faith without works is dead. So I really started to, to develop that mindset about what faith is. Mm -hmm. And what did you find, like, when you asked yourself that question of, you know, areas that I'm being faithful in, did you find that you were being more faithful in some areas versus others? And if so, like, what were those areas that you want to share with us? Yeah, the best, the best, the best word that I could describe it was, was being fickle. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible talks about the wayward man, you know, he gets tossed about by the sea. And one minute you're here, one minute you're there. And, um, and I found that even though I was faithful in some areas, I wasn't as faithful as I should be. Mm -hmm. And it, I, didn't, I didn't feel comfortable in that, in that uh, area of my spiritual, spiritual health. Mm -hmm. And I just needed to be more um, secure, or not secure, but more steadfast. Mm -hmm. So that's where the perseverance came in at. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't want people to realize, well, okay, she's just doing this on her own. She's just being faithful on her own because that's not true. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you can't be faithful on your own. It's all because of God's help that you get, that you become faithful. And that's what the book was really saying. You know, nothing that, none of the fruits of the spirit are born out of your own will, mm -hmm. you know, born out of your commitment to be with God and to develop your relationship with God. And he in turn allows you to have the fruits of the spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and, and self-control. And that's what helps you. Mm -hmm. And did you find like, what kind of things do you personally do to try to be more faithful in some areas of your life? Like, is there one or two things that you've tried? Like, whether it's being consistent with reading or praying or, you know, whatever it is, or tell or letting people know when you're struggling, whatever it is, were there a few things mm -hmm. that you did for that? Well, the first thing I did was realize what wasn't helping me. Mm, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oddly enough, I didn't run straight to the Bible. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I felt God talking to me even as, as, as I was reading the book. But when I sat down to really examine, okay, what is preventing me from being faith, faithful to God? Um, I think I found at least like um, six, six things I wrote them down. But like, I found that distractions was a huge thing mm -hmm. that was preventing me from being faithful to God. Like I said, the wayward man was kind of kicking in and just saying, you know, maybe you should do this. No, maybe you should do that. Maybe you should, you know, start this or start that or whatever. And I really had to be steadfast. Mm -hmm. and realize okay, this is what I feel God is calling me to do. So this is what I need to do. This is what I need to focus on. Right. And not be like, 
oh, focus on this trend or, you know, you know, we, we get into that, you know, oh, it's this trend, yeah. <clears throat> this trend is going on. It's just like, oh, okay, let's do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, um, I, yeah, I wrote down some, some things that were, that were really, but I just found like a lack of goal planning was also an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, just saying like, okay, I feel that God is helping me, telling me to lose weight, just for example, which he was. He was telling me to take better care of myself, not necessarily lose weight, but take better care of myself. And I'll be like, okay, well, I'll just try this or I'll try that. And then, you know, self-control, a lack of self-control kicks in. It's just like, well, I don't feel like doing that anymore. But God was saying, no, take care of yourself because your body is a temple to the Lord, you know? Mm -hmm. And... (laughs) So um, there was different things that I just found in my life that were making, more, making me more fickle. And I just decided, okay, this is what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just really committing to that and asking God to help me in that, uh, in, that in those areas. Mm-hmm. So I found that um, I needed to get a, a more handle on my money, for example. Mm-hmm and start to be more disciplined that's really what it is right faithfulness is discipline Mm -hmm. disciplining yourself and spiritual health or money matters or health matters or um whatever it is that god is calling you to do it's you have to be more disciplined in it Mm -hmm. boil it down any more more than that I think it's good because sometimes we see discipline or boundaries as something that is um, restricting. Because especially when you do look at the Bible and, you know, the Old Testament, there's full of all these laws, they're boundaries. But a lot of the times, you know, even with religion, you could even say that, you know, well, obviously if it's real, too religious to the point where it's voiding Christ, then we don't want it. But these boundaries that Christ even himself does give us, it's not about restriction. It is about uh, actually protecting us and helping us to grow more. Like what's going to bring us closer to him and what's going to take us away. So we need to set these boundaries. So if I'm boundary less in regards to my time and not really being intentional about growing in him or on all these different areas of my life, well, then, you know, that's the distraction and we're not going to grow. And, you know, and so I think, I think what you're even trying to say in regards to discipline and boundaries, it's just, it's actually meant to help you. Like, versus you know how we see discipline we see discipline as something that is bad and negative but yet it says in the bible in hebrews god disciplines those he loves like he wants us to grow so we need a little toot toot on the bunkie you know what i mean like um and it's not full but it's very similar with my financial health like that's what i've been this whole year i feel like god's just like you need to grow in this and um it was painful but like i remember telling told me my husband last week, you know, when we were talking about gratefulness because of Thanksgiving, and he said, I'm actually very grateful for the struggle in this area because mm-hmm. there is no way I would have been where I am now if God hadn't been like, this is how you need to, you need to just, it's time, yeah. you know? You know, I've yeah. been teaching courses about money. And if you asked me that two, like, a year ago, six months ago, I'd be like, you are crazy. I'm never going to yeah. do that because, but you know, it, I really felt like the same with you. Like God's like, you need to grow in this area because you're, but we, okay. So as Christians, we're like, Oh, money's evil. And I'm like, no, we're not. Or we're going to do a series on that too, but we're not supposed to worship it, but we don't need to ignore it because it's something that is mentioned tons of times in the Bible too. You know? So I think it's, I think it's what you're trying to say is even that, you know, God is going to call us at times to be more disciplined in one or two areas and to embrace that versus saying like, Oh, I don't want to like be strict with it. You know what I mean? And it doesn't really have to be, you know, spiritual all the time. Like, yeah. I felt like one thing that God was calling me to do was to be, to reduce the stuff in my house, you know, mm-hmm. it, it just right, plain and simple. But like you said, it was very hard, but like, you know, because of the baby coming and everything, we had to decide, okay, well, do we really need this specific item in our house? You know, I'm, a, I'm kind of a hoarder sometimes, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay, do we need to get rid of this stuff? Do we need to keep this stuff? And you know, the whole planning comes into effect. And then you decide, well, 
once you make away with the stuff, it's like, ah, you know, the house actually feels better. Yeah. You know, even though the Lord was saying, get rid of it. You're like, no, no, no. You know, it's, I don't want to get rid of it. You know, it's a part of me or whatever. But when you do, it's like, wow, thank you, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's kind of it's freeing like you said and you know that's not a spiritual thing not when we're talking faithfulness we're not really talking about um spiritual all the time you know i mean god could just be saying be faithful in um keeping your house clean you know it yeah faithfulness in my in my opinion is kind of connected to stewardship as well mm-hmm. you know you have to be good stewards in, in money like how you just said or in taking care of our car and mm-hmm. you know even if the Lord calls you to make your bed every morning, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it could be something as simple as that, you know, just start taking care of the things that I've given you. So yeah. I just started to really focus on, on that specific thing. And it just kind of blew my mind how, how faithfulness could be more than just, I have to pray or I have to read my Bible yeah. every day or whatever. But it just expanded into all of this. <laughs> right. And I think it's, it's so beautiful that you've said that even as we talk about Like that's what this whole series is about is is loving God completely and like really offering our whole life to him, not just our quiet time, (laughs) not just our marriage, but like our, what we do with our career, our relationships, all these different things. And I think it is actually when you're talking about space and um, getting rid of this stuff, because I remember you went through that season of like, oh, do I need this? I think that is very spiritual because I think often we hold on to material things thinking like, oh, I just need this. And to let it go is, it's a, it's an act of simplicity, but it's an act of like, really, I have like what I need. I don't need all of this. So, um, and that even can then translate to your walk with God as well. Right. So, yeah. so yeah. good. So it's, it's, it's basically just shaping around your, your, your spiritual health around your faith in God, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and we're supposed to be committed to God and everything that we do. And, and that really, that literally means everything that we do. Mm-hmm. And as I read the book, like I said, it, it, it allowed me to, th- to think about faithfulness more bigger than just reading my Bible every day and praying, mm-hmm. being faithful and cleaning my house, taking care of my car, taking yeah. care of my house, taking care of my baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and really faithfulness to me is being committed to, the things that God has called you to do to be reliable. And mm-hmm. I found that, you know, there'd be times when I'd say, well, um, uh, I, I'm going to eat fruit, fruits and vegetables this week. I keep going back to health. Sorry, but um, I'm going to eat fruits and vegetables this week and take care of my body. And then, you know, halfway through the week, I'd be like, no, I want Oreo cookies, <laughs> but just being reliable and saying, no, I have to take care of my body. I have to be true to my word. In other words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So good. And yeah, I think I love that you even titled it is that um, to persevere in faithfulness because faithfulness is a journey that you have to keep persevering in. You have to just be committed to being faithful. And will you be faithfulness all the time? Probably not. But as long as you're committed to doing your best to keep trying rather than saying like, oh, you know, I'm going to forget this fruit and veggie goal. You're saying, well, okay, maybe if I did that, okay, but I'm going to try again, you know, uh, and yeah. keep keep going at it so I think I needed to hear that there was something in I was just (laughs) wrestling wrestling with God over something um, business wise and I just was like I don't want to get my hopes up you know and um I tried and and I think he showed me this past month that if you're faithful it'll happen you know and so we have to trust him in his time even that like was being revealed to me Mm -hmm. that your words really are power, powerful oh, yeah. during your perseverance of faithfulness. Because if you're speaking negative, obviously you're going to have negative actions. Mm-hmm. But you have to speak what God has called you to speak. And that, that allows you to, 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 it allows him actually to come in more into your life and be like, okay, you can do this. You can do this. Mm-hmm. You know, God is your biggest advocate kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. yeah. the truth is, Brie, like, if you fail this test, God is going to bring you another test. Right. So well, persevere. <laughs> and I too, and I think, I think when we see God as good and God as graceful and gracious, I think it changes everything. So if you know you recognize that if you walk the other way and He says, "I want you to walk this way," or you try something and didn't work, like God is full of grace and His plan is so good, 
And I think when I started to shift my mind to that, I'm just like, I really have nothing to worry about in this life. You know, I really, it's like, he's just good. And, and when it finally comes, the thing you've been praying for or longing for, whether it's personal or someone, someone else's life, you can't help but be like, man, God is just good. Like he is good all the time. And, um, and it's despite me, but yet he wants me and he favors me and he loves me. Right. So, um, exactly. Who wouldn't and just to know that just just to know that just accelerates your faith you know right. i can do anything in christ who strengthens yeah. me that's what the bible says yeah. and to love unconditionally that's that's mind-blowing <laughs> yeah you know the world of conditions you know yeah but just love unconditionally by god mm-hmm. is mind-blowing to me mm-hmm. it's all yeah. good all right. Well, tell us a little bit about um, your giveaway that you're giving away uh, for uh, for this, and then tell us a little bit about your new Facebook group. Yeah, uh, my new uh, Facebook group is called Favored for Health, mm-hmm. and it's again, it's really born out of my study on faithfulness. It is a it's more it's more focused on holistic health, which is spiritual, emotional, physical, and mental health, mm-hmm. and it. I really wanted to put together a group that would help people to um, not just be faithful in their physical health, but be faithful in all these other areas. Mm -hmm. So I started the group Favored for Health. And um, so far we have uh, four members, I think. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Four members and hopefully it'll grow. But um, it's it's really just a group of to support people in their health, whatever that means to them and to give advice, to share your problems, to share your advice. Um, you know, even if your, your goal is to, um, my, goal, my goal this week was to drink only water and to see if that uh, helped, me in my, helped me with my health in any way. So I shared that on the group and just to get some advice or to get some um, motivation, whatever. So that's what Favored for Health is. And um, Hopefully, if you're interested in that or anybody else is interested in it, they can join that group and just share their own struggles or whatever. Um, And I I really just, I didn't want it to be a group that could just, um, I didn't want it to be like a group that says, oh, look, you know, I want it to be a motivational group. That's what I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, But my giveaway... (laughs) Um, my giveaway is uh, Loving the Whole Woman, which isn't a um, specific study on faithfulness. We're going to be studying that in my Facebook page, my Facebook mm-hmm. groups. But um, my giveaway is called Loving the Whole Woman. Mm-hmm. And it's about um, some other areas of spiritual growth that I've, that I've found. And mm-hmm. hopefully whoever wins that will enjoy it. <laughs> okay, well, it's awesome. I've gone through it. Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm so sad. I think, I think a lot of people, a lot of women too, especially listening, are going to be so blessed, you know, whether they choose to kind of join Defined by Love or join your mailing list or just even read your blog posts or join your new group. I think you have so much wisdom to share um, in regards to growing in your relationship with God. So thank you so much. Um, is there anything else you would like to share with us? I'll be sure to put all your social media links to in the, in the blog post that goes with this. Um, just thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for allowing me to, to, to tell you about what I've learned in faithfulness. So yeah, <laughs> no, it's good because I've been reading, you know, a little bit of your stuff for the last couple months and, you know, we haven't had to cast it, catch up and then to hear where it was birthed out of, I think is a really powerful. So, all right. Well, thanks everybody for, um, joining and thanks Steph for joining. Um, be sure to, if you are listening now to be sure to sign up for the giveaway and the summit, um, to win access to Steph's, uh, giveaway as well as all the others. And, uh, we'll go from there. All right. Thank you everybody. Thank you.